Listen to me, once you realize who you are, you stop operating in desperation. You stop saying yes to stuff you ain't supposed to be saying yes to. So here's my big problem with a lot of y'all, is your belief system is off. Like everybody can see how sweet you are. People are commenting on, well, you could do this and you could do that and you the only one ain't caught up with it yet. Gee, why you always on beast mode? I'm shocked more people are on beast mode. There are people who living from check to check and they comfortable. It's the weirdest thing to me. I'm like, boo, you broke. And you broke on several levels. We not talking about Sally Mae, you still owe your grandma. I'm talking about, you need to cash your grandma out. Listen to me, unless you number one in your industry, you shouldn't be chilling. And if you number one in your industry, you got enough common sense to know you better not be chilling. Every single day of my life, I feel like giving 120. Every single day, somebody said yesterday, ET, you gave 120, what you gonna do tomorrow? I said, I don't know, get 140. I don't know, but I don't have days where I don't feel like it, why? Because I'm counting on me, my wife's counting on me, my son's counting on me, I don't have days to waste. There's nothing wrong with the opportunity. You're not giving 120. You're giving 70. You're giving 60. You're giving 50. And you won't with these people who've given sweat, who's given blood, who's given tears. You won't what they paid for, and it ain't free. You don't belong at the bottom, and it's time for you to get your butt from down there. It's time for you to stop being comfortable at the bottom. Get your butt up and get to where you're supposed to be. The Bible says he was in a pig pen and he came to himself and he went home. Get your butt up. You are a royal priesthood. Get where you belong. Do what you're supposed to do. Live like you're supposed to live. You got all the stuff. You got, you got it all. But you will not outwork me because your height has nothing to do with my work ethic. Your face has nothing to do with my work ethic. Your two-parent background has nothing to do with my work ethic. You will not outwork me. On your jet, you will not outwork me. In your Bentley, you will not outwork me. You will not outwork me. Get up. Act like you playing basketball. Act like you playing football. Compete. That's what bothers me. Many of y'all are not competing. I need effort. Compete. Go to class. I just left the school telling these kids, act like you playing football. Go on that dog on classroom. Compete. Many of you have lost your competitive edge. Get your competitive edge back. I'm not against no other motivational speaker. I'm just competitive. Some of you are not successful because every single time you run up against a trial, every time you run up against a tribulation, you stop and you cut off beast mode. And what I'm here to tell you is, if you tell that thing, I'm here just like you here, and I promise you, I ain't leaving without the degree. I ain't leaving, I will not leave without that goal. I will not leave without that dream. I will not leave this opportunity. So I get it. Some of you are holding on to some real good memories that are no longer current memories. And you need to let them go so that you can get what's next. That's what we're going to do. We're going to get the right information and then we're going to get narrow focus and boom, we're going to go for it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's it. Many of you will not be successful because you've got this giant goal and no steps to go with it. You just in your mind like, girl, this is my year. How many steps? I don't know. Like, what is it going to take for you to do it? I don't know. I just know this is my year. Can I be real with you? If you can't measure it, it ain't real. Keep your dreams phenomenal. Keep your vision phenomenal. Keep it phenomenal. And now I need you to get your weight up. As an individual, I need you to get your schedule up. I need you to get your life up. I need you to get your words up. I need you to get your heart up. I need you to get your action up. I need you to get to a place that every single thing that you do is phenomenal so that the life you want to live, you can actually live that life. You lay hold of it. And when that thing tells you to quit, you look at it in his eye and say, I ain't going nowhere. I will break you before you break me. You will not defeat me. You will not destroy me. Some of you are so ignorant. You've been through so much hell. You gonna quit now? Why me, God? Why did I get MS? Why did I get cancer? Why did my mama die? Why did I get fired? Do you understand? Listen, you got through that. You got put through that because what that does, that tension produces greatness. 
Stop running from it and run to it. Stop telling me what you're going through. The greats, they get to it, they go through it. And the harder it is, the better. We go put in work because every time you put in work, you get the same consequences. You get paid, you get rewarded. And when you out there dealing with the real world, it ain't pretty. You got to have heart. Get some heart. That's why you gotta do me a huge favor. You gotta do me a huge favor. You gotta get to the point where you don't need a car anymore. You don't need a house anymore. You don't need to be pushed by anybody anymore. Your dreams, your wives gonna push you. Your spouse is gonna push you. Your child is gonna push you. The need to get better is going to push you because you're closer than you're ever going to be. It's gonna push you. You don't need anything to push you. Your goals are gonna push you. Your dreams are gonna push you. The, 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 the opportunity of a lifetime that happens in this particular time frame is gonna push you. It's gonna drive you. It's going to make you better. So do me a favor as I leave. As I leave, you can't be average anymore, 70%. You can't do it. You can't do it and have what you want. You can't give me 70 and be what you want. You can't give me 70 and do what you want. You can't be average anymore. You can't be good anymore. 80%. You can't be good anymore. 80% and have what you want. You can't be good at something and have everything you dreamed of. To make your dreams become real. To no longer dream them but walk in them. You can't. 90%, you can be good, you can be good, you can be great, but you still won't get it all. I'm telling you, but when you become phenomenal, there's nothing you can't have, nothing you can't do, nothing you can't be, and I just, I believe that you're in this room right now. I believe that we're in the same space right now. I believe we're all in this place together. Listen to me, I believe that we're all in this place together because all of us, all of us hate average. None of us want to be good. And for those of us who reach greatness, we have a desire to push past greatness and see what phenomenal looks like. So I need everybody in the room, when you think about your goal and you think about your dream, I need you to understand, as I said to my wife in that hospital room, I can, I will, I must. I need everybody to say it with me. I can, I will, I must. Come on. I can, I will, I must. Again, I can, I will. I must. Now, now, for those of you, you want it all. Every single dream. Every single goal. As I say it, for those of you who really want it, you, you're going to say it and you're going to say, stand and you're going to say it like you mean it. I can. I will. I must. Come on. I can. I will. I must. Come on. I can. I will. I must. Now say it like you mean it. I can. I will. I must. Again. I can. I will, I must, again, I can, I will, I must. Now I need you to think about that loved one, that, 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 that individual that you have to do this for. I need you to say it with me. I can, I will, I must. Come on, for that individual, I can, I will, I must. For that person, I can, I will, I must. For that thing you want to accomplish, I can, I will, I must. Again, I can, I will, I must. Now I want you to think about that hurdle. I want you to think about that thing that keeps pressing you down. I want you to think about that, that mountain that's hard to climb. I want you to think about that thing that you just can't seem to get over. We're gonna get over it today. We're gonna get over it. We're gonna get over it together. I can, I will, I must. Uh, we're gonna add to it. I can get over it. I will get over it. I must get over it. Ready? I can get over it. I will get over it. I must. Come on, come on. I can get over it. I will get over it. I must get over it. I know something about you. I know you're not a quitter. I know you're a survivor. I know you're a survivor. If you're watching me right now, I know something about you. You are a survivor. So I, I want you to get off this. I want you to cut it off. I want you to go in the mirror and I want you to make the rest of your life the best of your life. I can, I will, I must. It's your boy E.T. I don't belong in this room. I remember the videos had already been out. My numbers were great. And I would come in rooms and go, or, or like that room, like I go to a high school, like boom. I go to a youth detention center, boom. I go to a prison, boom. I come to corporate and go, I don't know if I belong in here. Everybody in the room don't look like me. They don't come from where I come from. I don't know if I belong here and I'll never, for, I'll never forget. I had a conversation with Les Brown. Les Brown had called me to Orlando. We sat in the hotel 
and I left and I started talking to Les and I started naming like, yo, you, Les Brown, this person, number one in the world. He said, don't you ever say that again. I said, don't say what? He said, you the best in the world right now. I said, what? He said, you the best in the world right now. There's nobody as good as you in the world. You're the best right now. The only reason you're not the best right now is because you don't believe you're the best now. And when you walk out this room, I want you to go in the mirror and tell yourself, I'm the best right now. He said, before you even become number one, start to proclaim it and say it long before it happened. Say, I'm the number one motivational speaker in the world. And when I was number 20, I started saying, I'm the number one motivational speaker in the world. And I went to the computer, and the world said exactly what I said, that Eric Thomas is number one in the world. I spoke it, the world heard it, and it activated. Your problem is that you don't believe you belong here. Your problem is that you don't think you should be sitting down here. So listen to me, there are those of you saying, I want to be a millionaire, I want to be the best at this company, right? But your value system says you believe in sleep more than you believe in grinding. That you're spending more money than you're making. Why? Because you're a consumer, but you're, you're reading all the books and you're saying everything the books are saying. But those books are not in alignment with your value. And if you're going to go to the next level, your values are going to have to change. When I believed that my voice was needed in this world, when I believed that I needed to be on the stage, not for myself, but to speak to a group of people who come from where I come from, a working class, who don't know what it's like to make millions and millions of dollars, who don't understand what wealth looks like, that I needed to come in the room with a single parent mother, with a father not in my life, being homeless in a high school dropout. Only somebody who comes from where you come from can tell you you belong. And I had to get my butt on stage because there's some folks that Les Brown can't reach. There's some folks that Tony Robbins can't reach. There's some folks that only I can reach. And so I need to be on the stage with them, doing what I was called to do. But what you cannot do is you cannot quit doing the process. You cannot give up because it ain't what you see. You cannot give up. Champions keep going when they don't have anything left in their tank. When you want this thing as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you find a way. Right, come on, come on, I want to put some context into it. I want to put some context. They sent my mother-in-law home eight years ago. Uh, the cancer metastasized throughout our whole body. They're like, it ain't nothing we can do for you. Go home, spend time with your family. And people was like, yep, that's it for her. She said, it's not it for me. And they said, what do you mean it's not over for you? The doctor said, she said, I don't care nothing about a doctor. I got to see my grandson graduate from high school. He's a junior now at Michigan State University. She said, I got to see my granddaughter graduate. my only two grandkids. I see my granddaughter graduate from high school and she graduates in June. She said, after that, I might die. But up until then, I ain't going nowhere. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? And what we said to each other is, I can get through this. I will get through this. I must get through this. So, so I just need you to think about three people in your family that you love, three people. Three people that you love, three people. You got them? They there? You got them? This is what I need you to do for me. Because some of you have a hard time staying motivated for a straight 100 days. So what I need you to do for me is I need you to think about those people every day when you're doing what you're doing. Do you have some days where you just want to hit the snooze button? Raise your hand for me. You want to hit the snooze button, right? So watch this. This is what has to happen. That person that you think about has to be louder than the snooze button. So when you think about granny, you got to think about, do I hit the snooze button or do I get up and make it happen for granny? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Who are you doing this for? So the days you don't feel like getting up, just think about them. Somebody tell me in this room, when you think about your siblings, when you think about mom and dad and grandma, when you think about your uncle and aunts, when you think about those coaches, those people who've been there for you, just raise your hand if you say, E.T., sleep is better than that. Just raise your hand and tell me, anybody in the room, sleep is better than them, E. Just raise your hand, somebody tell me, E.T., you don't, you don't get it, you don't know how hard it is, E. I probably don't. I just lived in abandoned buildings. Hey, I trash cans. I probably don't. Maybe I ain't never been through what you've been through, but I've been through my go-through. And you don't, you don't, you don't get here by quitting when you're tired. You get here by quitting when you finish, when you're done. You don't stop when you're tired. You stop when you're done. You stop when you complete it, when you execute it. 
execution is worship. And so I execute for my mom. I execute for my grandma. I execute for my sister. I execute for those kids in the hood who looking for a role model. That's why I wear the hat with a PhD. That's why I wear the J's. So when the kids in the hood look at me, they say, if ET can do it, I can do it. That's why I can't quit and give up, even though I get tired just like everybody else. Why? Because this is what I do. This is my lane. This is your lane. You got to murder it. So when I ask you, you got energy, don't play with me. When I tell, when I say again, you got that energy for the next hundred days, I need to feel your soul in this room. All right, I can? Come on, I can? Come on, I can? I will. I must. Come on, I can? I will. I must. Give yourself some energy. Come on. Some of you, are, your priorities are out of line and you're partying right now and you broke. You broke in your relationships, you broke in your health, like for real, you broke it, you broke, you broke. And you're broke because you're not getting the eye, you're not understanding the eye. I told you last week, it is about an invention, an idea. If you, would, if you would get off the couch, stop playing video games, stop murmuring, stop complaining, stop going to a job you don't like, you're about to go to a whole other level in every area of your life. I'm talking about the I am. I am strong. I am equipped. I am confident. I am more than a conqueror. Don't let your words guide you. Let your actions guide you. Everything you've ever wanted, everything you've ever wanted in life, it's in your idea. It's in your I am. I am. Come on, I am. I am. For I am. I am. After you get off work, just like you invest in them, you need to invest in yourself. And the problem is simple. You're not investing in your I am. Write the idea down and shut up. You ain't got to share your idea with 50 people. You're watching people blow up who had an idea and they turn that idea into a reality. And not only are they millionaires or billionaires, but they making people millionaires and billionaires. Your success is not determined on just what you say. Write the idea down and boom, get to stepping, baby. Get to the action. You don't get out of life what you want. Raise your level of consciousness. You get out of life who you are. I am the greatest. You haven't convinced you that you need to put the money in so you can get where you're trying to get to. You don't believe that you are. And the very first thing the creator said was, tell them I am. After you do pursue, what does that mean? You never get to a place where you're chilling. Now your children's children will be satisfied for a marginal life and a marginal marriage. If they see their mom and dad have a marginal anything, they're going to embrace that. Why? Because you can tell people whatever you want to tell them, but people don't live their life based on what you tell them. They live it on based on who you are. This information is going to change your life forever. Like, if you've been here, this information is going to change your life. Find out who you are. Find out what your purpose is in life. Everybody got a dream. Everybody got a goal. Stop dreaming about it. Stop talking about it and get up and do something about it. Here's the deal. If you get to the top of the tree, all the fruit from the bottom at the top is going to be there, son. So I don't need you focusing on cars and money and stuff. You're going to get that. I need you to focus on why you were born in the first place. Why are you here on earth for this particular time? What are you doing here? You need to tell you that you owe you something. I don't want nothing from you but for you to leave this room and know what you want. What do you want in your marriage? What do you want with your son and your daughter? What do you want in your health? What do you want financially? Like how much money do you want to make a year? What do you want to drive? How do you want to live? Stop just waking up like an accident. What do you want? And then once you find out what you want, spend the rest of your natural life waking up and going after it. The reason why I speak with so much passion, ET, why do you speak with so, uh, so much authority? Because I'm talking about my life, not something that I read. I ate out of trash cans. 
You ain't got to start with the two-parent background. You ain't got to start with wealth. You ain't got to start with your parents graduated. It's not the hand that you dealt. You got rich kids who own drugs. You got rich kids who committed suicide. You got rich kids who, who don't know their purpose in life. It's not the hand that you was dealt, baby. It's how you play your hand. Every opportunity is the last opportunity. Every opportunity, I have to reprove myself again. Every opportunity, I'm still nervous. E.T., you've been doing this for years. Why are you so nervous? Because the day you become content the day you stop evaluating yourself, the day you stop growing, the day you stop getting better is the day you die, is the day the person who's trying to catch you will get you. And I ain't where I want to be and I'm like, God, I ain't where I want to be. And he was like, you stop being a victim. I said, what you mean a victim? Well, it ain't my fault my mom got pregnant at 17. It ain't my fault my daddy wasn't there. It ain't my fault they couldn't get along. It ain't my fault. He said, boy, you, you grown. You ain't 10 no more. You, you, the decisions you make right now is up to you. You crying about something that happened to you when you was a kid. You ain't even no kid no more. You a grown man. Take full ownership. The stupid stuff you doing, your parents didn't make you play no video games. What you crying about? So what your daddy wasn't there? Your mama ended up getting married. What you crying about? He went to work every day. He never beat you. He never abused you. Your mama did the best she knew how to do. What you crying about? You grew up in a house. What you crying about? You've been lazy your whole life and now somebody told you you can make six figures and you go knock on the door a hundred times and your body say you a lie. You ain't never gave 100%. And in order to knock on the door 100 times, you're going to have to get 120. Get up out of here. You can't do this. And you're going to have to fight and fight and fight and fight. And most of you won't be successful, not because you can't do it, but you can't outlast your old you long enough to get to your new new. Every day when I wake up, I got all kind of demands. You got all kind of demands. And the reason why you're not where you want to be is not because you're not great, but you taking all other people's stuff before you spend enough time with yourself to get to know you and get to know what you want and what you should do. And so please raise your hand with me if you're saying, E, from this day forward, I make a commitment to myself in a way I've never made a commitment to myself before. Let me see your hands. I said, I'm going to grind. I'm going to fight. I'm going to work. I'm going to press toward. I'm going to learn. I'm going to do everything in my power every single day. I'm going to do everything in my power to become a victor and not a victim. I'm not, I've never seen, I've never seen all blacks play a day in my life. And if you watch some of my videos, I have all blacks in my videos. Why? Because they're what? They're winners. When you're a winner, winning spreads. So everybody, I got videos where I'm like, y'all, I don't really know how to show my passion. Somebody said, get the all blacks. Ah, ah. I'm like, yep, that's what I need, all blacks. Yep, yep, I need the all blacks. I need to, why? Because they say what I'm saying. They just said it in rugby. I don't say, I don't know nothing. I'm like, ooh, that's a violent sport. Their passion is all over there. Why? Because winners win. And I can't explain it to you, but you better stop making excuses and find a way to win. How do you do it then? E, we wake up and grind. Winners win. I focus more on winning than I focus on structure. I focus on winning. And when you become a winner, they start seeing you with winners. Every day in Africa, in the safari, a lion wakes up. Every single day in a safari, a lion wakes up, right? And, and every single day in a safari, a gazelle wakes up. It says that if you wake up and you're a gazelle, you realize if you're going to survive as a gazelle, if you're going to survive, you must outrun the slowest gazelle. In your mind, you're thinking you got to outrun the fastest line. That's not the truth. You just got to stay ahead of the slow gazelle. That's it. Every single day when you wake up, whatever it is that you do professionally, you better make sure you're not in the back of the pack.
You better be as close to the front, if not up front as possible, because every single day when the lion wakes up, it's only one thing on that lion's mind, and that is catching the gazelle that couldn't keep up. What the gazelle realizes is that the way it operates, that the way it performs, that the way it goes about its daily business is contingent upon life and death. That if that gazelle does not do what he or she is supposed to do, it will be eaten by a lion. Even if you are a lion, even if you are a lion and you have the advantage that when the sun comes up, if you are a gazelle or a lion, you better get to running. Because if you are a lion, a gazelle is still not going to come to you and say, just eat me. I don't care how deep you are as a lion. When you wake up, nothing is going to come to you. Nobody's going to give you anything. They're still not giving stuff to E.T. I still have to work. I still have to fly 20 hours to get to Australia. I still have to go to London. I still have to do free stuff in Detroit. I still have to drive. I'm a lion. And when the sun comes up, I still have to get to running. Here's the challenge though. I asked myself when I read that story, that's what's on the surface. I read it and I started asking myself, E.T., what's the difference between the gazelle and what's the difference between the lion? What's the difference? I know that they're wired differently, but what's the difference? And what I discovered is that the gazelle is running from something. The gazelle is running from something. So as long as the lion is chasing the gazelle, the gazelle is running. But as soon as the lion stops chasing the gazelle, it stops. That's a lot of you in this room. You will run. You'll do what you're supposed to do. As long as you're getting pushed, as long as you're getting motivated, as long as somebody is encouraging you, as long as somebody's coaching you, as long as somebody's pushing you, as long as somebody's prodding you, you're doing what you're supposed to do. As long as somebody's calling you, as long as someone is enticing you, as long as somebody's giving you rewards, you're moving. But as soon as that stops, you stop. I asked myself the question about the lion, and I said the lion is not running to be rewarded. The lion is running to eat. Every single day, the lion is running to eat because the lion realizes when he kills the gazelle, not only does he eat the gazelle, but he brings it back home. You've got to ask yourself, what's your why? What motivates you? What pushes you? What drives you? And if that thing is internal, if nobody has to call you, if nobody has to prod you, if nobody has to reward you, if nobody has to give you anything, if you are self-motivated and self-regulated, you can have it, you can be it, you can do it. So I'm telling you, number one, this ain't about you. First of all, this is about a program. And this program has a lot of pride and this program is considered one of the bro best programs in the world. But the program is only as deep as the dudes that suit up and go out there and play. And that play don't start on Saturday. When does that play start? Good. So let's so talk to me because I'm not I don't do football. So you got to talk to me. So we play Saturday. Right. So that don't count. So when is the first day that we start with this grind? What day is that? Sunday. And what are we doing on Sunday? Recovering. Beautiful. And we don't need to take that lightly. Right. Like we don't need to take. I don't need. No, you do. You got experts here. Get the recovery. Good. What does Monday look like? Good. What does that mean? I'm sorry. Good. That, how many of y'all be honest? You're not even giving 80% to that. You're watching it, but you ain't really there, there, locked in. Like, you know you should be locked in. Let me see your hand. Just be honest. You're not locked in. Like, come on, stop playing. We men. You want to send the coaches out? You're a grown man. Raise your hand. Like, E, I ain't really committed to that like that. Okay, let me say it like this. 
How many of you are not committed to installment like you are actually playing the game? Let me see your hand. All right, I gotta tell y'all this. You ever seen a giraffe, like their body? Does it look like a lion's body? When a lion is born and a giraffe is born, are they born with that body? When a lion is born, it's not a lion. When a lion is born, it's a what? It's a cub. You know what, you know what makes it look the way it looks? Does anybody know what makes it look that way? Not, yeah, he said growing, but not just growing. That's right, you grow up, but it just don't naturally happen like that. How, do you, how does a lion look like that, but a giraffe don't look like that? He's chasing the food. So it is the process of hunting. It's not the actual meat that make him look like that. It is the actual hunt. It's the actual chasing. So whether he catch it or not, every time he goes on the hunt, He's developing. Some of y'all so caught up on the game that you don't get it. It is in practicing. It is in the stomach. It is in lifting weights. It is in resting. It is in eating right. It is in making good decisions that you look a certain way. I tell you, you have an opportunity right now that you will never have. People say, why you grind so hard, E? I might not be the number one motivational speaker in the world five years from now. I gotta get everything I can get right now. Every book I can write. Every, listen to me, my school is being paid for by the athletic department. I'm hot right now. A real man in the dark, when nobody's watching, he putting in work. A real man, when coach ain't even watching, he's studying film on his own because he loves the process. Because real lions like to hunt. They love the process just as much as they love the prize. And some of y'all just want to score. You don't like the process. You're not in love with the process. You just like to put the pass on. You love when it's your time. Everybody in the crowd, you're like, hey, 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 mom, can you see? You can't even start until you know your people there. Once you see them, you're like, show time. Day after day after day, grind after grind after grind, airport after airport, driving mile after mile. ET, aren't you tired? Yes. I might be, I don't know. ET, aren't you ready to take a break? Yes, I might be, but listen to me, I can't. Why? Because I grind for Jalen. I grind for Jada. I grind for Didi. I grind for my mother. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I grind for Vanessa. I hustle for, so the days I want to hit that alarm clock, I think about my why. I can't quit. My son, $25,000 a year. I can't stop. He counting on me. My daughter, I can't quit. I can't stop. I can't get tired. I can't give up. I can't give in. My mama counting on me. My wife is counting on me. I, yeah, I might be different, but I am brilliant. Yep, I might be loud, but I am special. We can go from being homeless and high school dropouts to having PhDs writing books and becoming the voice of a generation. We can do whatever we believe we can do, and we don't need anybody's permission to do it but ours. I am phenomenal, and I don't owe anybody an apology. I am going to do great things, and I don't owe anybody an apology. I am. I was created to be great. I was created to do great things. I was created to have great things, and I will no longer ask others for their permission. Most of you won't be successful because when you're studying and you get tired, you quit. And I'm here to tell you today, if you got a, somebody came to my office the other day crying, I said, look, don't cry to give up, cry to keep going. Don't cry to quit. You already in pain, you already hurt, get a reward from it. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. Listen to me, I'm here to tell you today that you can come here, you can jump up, you can do flips, you can be excited when we give away money, but listen to me, you'll never be successful until I don't have to give you a dime to do what you do. You won't be successful until you say, I don't need that money. Cause I got it in here. So if you want to make six figures, you can't just be talking about you want to make six figures. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it.
You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Some of you love sleep more than you love success. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be successful, you've got to be willing to give up sleep. You got to be willing to work off for three hours of sleep, two hours. If you really want to be successful, some days you will have to stay up three days in a row. Because if you go to sleep, you might miss the opportunity to be successful. That's how bad you got to want it. You got to go days without, listen to me, you got to want to be successful so bad that you forget to eat. So listen to me, Emmett Smith said this at the end of the commercial. Emmett Smith said, all men are created equal, some work harder in preseason. I'm going to say it again because you might have missed it. All men are created equal, some work harder in preseason. So that means that there are some people who are going to see the professor, going to see the TA. And even when the professor says, I don't meet with you, my TA meet with you, you say, I don't want to talk to your TA. I don't pay the TA. I pay you to teach me. So you're going to have to find some time to meet me. If I got to meet you at the mall, if I got to meet you at your house, you are going to see me. Listen to me. All men are created equal. Some work hard in preseason. When I went to college, guys were way smarter than me. 4.0s, 3.0s, they went to the Ivy League high schools, came to Oakwood from these great high schools. Most of them are not doing what I'm doing. Why? Because it's not about where you come from. It's about heart. You come to a place where, you know, being smart ain't enough. You gotta have heart. That's number one. Watch number two. Number two, catch number two. I wrote it down. I wanted to make sure you got it. It says, to be, watch this, watch this. We're talking about sacrifice now. The important thing is this. You're right while I'm saying it, because I only have about three more minutes. Listen to me. The most important thing is this, to be able at any moment to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. That's the number two thing, you gotta catch that one. To be able to, listen to me, at any moment, some of you, you can make sacrifices when Monday Night Football is not on. You can make a sacrifice, but when the game come on, for some reason, you just attach to it. For some of you, when your favorite show come on, you, you, can be, you can make sacrifices on Sunday when ain't nothing going on. But when your favorite show comes on Monday, bam, some of you, you focus into the phone ring and then you're like, I gotta answer it. If I don't answer the phone, I'm gonna die. I'm saying to you today that there are some of you, if you give up your cell phone, you would be successful. But your cell phone is more important to you than your success. I'm gonna say it again, I'm gonna hurt somebody. I'm going to hurt somebody. Some of you need to give up your cell phone because the time you spend on your cell phone could be used for your success. The time you could be using to be successful, you're using it on the cell. And the cell phone is not bringing you nothing but a bill. And somebody has told you you couldn't live without it. I'm talking about going deep now, giving up stuff. Watch what it says. To be able at any moment to sacrifice what we are for what we could be. I don't do well in math. You're right. You ain't never studied. I'm not good in writing because you have never written before. But I dare you to fail in writing for a whole year to see if you can get to the end. I dare you to fail. I dare you to take that same class over and over again. I dare you to stop dropping classes like you soft. Always want to give up. I'm dropping. Why are you dropping? I'm so grateful that the slaves didn't drop and quit. Say, I'm just going to stop. I'm a slave. I'm just going to be a slave. I'm going to quit. Listen to me. The slaves said, we will live because one day we will become. So I'm here because when I tell you about breakthrough, I'm not talking about something I read, a college course. I'm talking about I've been through it. So here's the first thing I want y'all to know. This is the year of the breakthrough. This is the year of the what? This is the year of the what? This is the year of the what? Act like you hear me. This is the year of the what? This is the year of the what? Act like it. It's hard when you're in a library and you study it and you read and you take the test and you get a 55. That's hard. So what I want you to understand about the breakthrough is that 90% is work, but the last 10%, that's fight. But you mean to tell me I'm going to every class and I'm still failing? You mean to tell me I'm reading every paper, I'm still failing? That's the hard part. The breakthrough is the hardest part because the breakthrough is not about the X's and O's. The breakthrough is not about the weight room. The breakthrough is not about 
studying the plays, and the breakthrough, that last 10% is all mental toughness. The last 10%, the breakthrough is not about being better than them. You're already better than them. You're just not better than them mentally. The breakthrough, I'm going to break these boys. Why? Because where they come from, they couldn't get up at 3 o'clock in the morning if they wanted to. They smarter than me. They come from privilege. They got the language. They got the code. They got the rules. They grew up in it. But they will not get up earlier than me. They will not put out more content than me. Beast mode. One, two, three. Beast mode. One, two, three. Beast mode. I beast mode my way to number one. I'm talking about maxing out. Listen to me, y'all. Here's my, I don't play basketball, but if you watch my videos and you watch me, I will not walk out of life. I'm going to crawl out of life. When I die, I'm going to taste the I promise you, when I die, I won't be. I won't have no energy left. Every practice, I don't want no energy left. Why? Because those other girls you playing, they young. And they're going to burn out by the second half because they're young. And what you're going to do is you're going to be the one to do it. Not, this is what I love about life. When you look at all other motivational speakers, I'm going to be looking at them and I say, ooh, they're ahead of me. But I can get them. Why? Because they ain't been homeless. I have an advantage when you're homeless and eating out of trash cans. I flew first class today, right? It was so funny. I flew first class and I guess it's a small flight. So when they served our meal, it was like a real turkey sandwich. You can see other people looking like I'm flying first class. That's wheat bread. I saw them too. I saw the way they was looking like that's wheat bread with cheese. It's not warm. It was like a, I'm talking about like a middle school lunch that your mama would send you with, with a little small bag of chips. I murdered it. I was like, whoa, turkey. I, it was so much turkey, it was a cold cut. I took most of the turkey out, Lee, and just kept that much in there. I'm like, it's too much turkey. You, they looking like, how dare them serve me this? This is first class. I was home, like, let's go. I used to, I didn't eat like this when I was uh, uh, homeless. I didn't know when my next meal would come. Some of you, your problem is you can't deal with adversity. You look at adversity as something negative when it's not. Adversity is the best thing that ever happened to you. Why? Because when adversity happens, most people are going to quit. Listen, we're going into the fourth quarter. I'm working harder now than I worked in January. Then I worked in May. I'm about to put it on now. Why? Because most of the people who do what I do, they're about to get tired. My son is 23. Lee, I promise you. We had a layover, went to my mama's house. He slept the whole time. He woke up and said, Dad, I don't know how you do it. I went and worked out. Did the hit boy. Walk with my mom for three or four miles with my niece, talked to my mom, got on the plane, got off, boom, did a presentation. They was like fire pit. They was like, E, best presentation you did all this year. I can't wait to the fourth quarter. I can't wait to the second half because that's when talent goes away. All your talent gone with five minutes left, your legs about to give out. So who wins? Only the person that can go through adversity, that's when you start winning. So that's why you need to practice till you burn out. So when you get on the court, you'll never burn out. And they gonna burn out. They gonna burn out. I'm telling you, it, it, you see it. It's like the game goes up and down and up and down. And the last four, y'all gotta go watch Michael Jordan when y'all get a chance. He would always take a break at about maybe 10 minutes. He'd come back with six minutes left in the game. And he would. And Mike would come in in those last five, six minutes, he would kill you. I never said when you want to succeed as bad as you want to eat because you can go 21 days, maybe 30, but without eating. I never said when you want to succeed as bad as you want water because you can go about three days or so without it. I said when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, you probably only got a minute or so, then you'll be successful. And so one of the things I want to do for you as an educator today, you don't necessarily need better skills per se. That's not what you need. But what some of you need is to go from 70% to 120%. Some of you need to go from 80% to 120%. The reason why I'm giving 120 is because your daddy's not in your life. The reason why I'm giving 120 is because your father's in prison. The reason why I'm giving 120 is because your mom is working two jobs. The reason why I'm giving 120 is because your grandma is raising you. The reason why I'm giving 120 is because you live in a community where education is not valued. 
So I don't care what you do academically, when you leave here, you can't go and get credit for getting A's. That in your neighborhood, in your community, nobody affirms you for reading at a certain level. Nobody affirms you for doing well on your ACT or your SAT. Where you come from, education is not affirmed. So even if you are a scholar, you have to keep it to yourself. You have to suppress it. So the reason why I give 120 is because your daddy's not there to give 80, and your mama's too tired to give 100, and your grandma is washed out, so she's giving 50. And y'all do that little stuff about you gonna eat, but y'all ain't got no doggone motor. You get tired quick. If you practice for one or two days, you wore out. You do a couple hours, you tired. But yet you compete against people right now, that's their lifestyle. And you think they about to let you take their lifestyle? I don't want to do it as much as I want to eat. I don't want to do it as much as I need to breathe. I want to be the best in the world as bad as I want to breathe. I want to be the Michael Jordan of education. I want to be the LeBron James of education. And I ask you the question. I ask you the question today, are you giving 120? I never said when you want to succeed as bad as you want to eat. I never said when you want to succeed as bad as you want water. I said when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. I, I told my professor, what happens if I fail? He said, what happens if you pass? I said, but what happened if I don't get it? What happened if I put in all these years and it don't work out? He said, but what happens if you put in all these years and you get it? Some of you are interested in this work and you like telling people you do it. It make you feel good. But you're not, you're not 120 though. Some of you are committed, but this like your side hustle. I'm just being real, y'all. I was fully committed. I left everything and started doing it. And because I was fully committed, the world responded to that commitment. But you just interested. You're not really committed to it. You're not putting in 50, 60 hours. When my wife got diagnosed with MS, I never quit doing the work because I wasn't doing it for people. I was doing it for the kids that I was doing it for. So even with MS, she had to quit her job. I had to take it to another level. What up, what up, what up? Audio jump. Some of y'all are negotiating, not because of the company. You negotiate because you're not the best at what you do. And I need y'all to go back and be the best at what you do. And then I need y'all to come together as the best and then take this thing to the next level. And there are some of you, you know what you want. You know what you want, but you are not personally willing to do the work it takes to get it. What you're trying to do is do what you've done on this level and get the next level. You're trying to do exactly what you're doing on this level. You're like, I'm getting up every day. I'm putting in two and a half. I'm putting in three and I'm not getting the opportunity. The opportunity might require three and a half. I'm lifting weights. I'm eating right and I'm not getting the opportunity. It might require getting up and working out three and a half. It might require you saying no to your friends. It might require you changing your diet. It might require you moving to another city. Whatever it takes, you got to be willing to do it. And you keep saying you're not there because of something else, because it's easier to blame somebody else. Because now you don't got to do no work when you blame somebody else. Guess who got to do the work? They got to do the work. But guess who got the power? They got the power. How many of y'all tired of other people having the power? Let me see your hand. You want the power. I'm just being real, hands down. Hands down, think about what I just said. How many of you want the power? Let me see your hands. Good, write down, write down next to your crazy idea some of the things that you know you're doing wrong that's messing up what you're doing. So there's some of you, you're trying to get there too fast. Relax. It's gonna come. So what happens if you get there too fast and you're not patient, some people have gotten to fame and lost their families. They've lost their wives. They've lost their riches, right? They've lost their wealth. They lost their influence, right? They lost their name. Listen to me, in a good name, man, it's hard to get a good name. It's even harder when you lose it to get it back. 
so be patient. Most of you won't be successful because when you're studying and you get tired, you quit. And I'm here to tell you today, if you got a, somebody came in my office the other day crying, I said, look, don't cry to give up, cry to keep going. Don't cry to quit. You already in pain, you already hurt, get a reward from it. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. Listen to me, I'm here to tell you today that you can come here, you can jump up, you can do flips, you can be excited when we give away money, but listen to me, you'll never be successful until I don't have to give you a dime to do what you do. You won't be successful until you say, I don't need that money, because I got it in here. So if you want to make six figures, you can't just be talking about you want to make six figures. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Some of you love sleep more than you love success. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be successful, you've got to be willing to give up sleep. You've got to be willing to work off for three hours of sleep, two hours. If you really want to be successful, some days you're going to have to stay up three days in a row. Because if you go to sleep, you might miss the opportunity to be successful. That's how bad you got to want it. You got to go days without, listen to me, you got to want to be successful so bad that you forget to eat. So listen to me, Emmett Smith said this at the end of the commercial. Emmett Smith said, all men are created equal, some work harder in preseason. I'm going to say it again because you might have missed it. All men are created equal, some work harder in preseason. So that means that there are some people who are going to see the professor, going to see the TA, and even when the professor says, I don't meet with you, my TA meets with you, you say, I don't want to talk to your TA. I don't pay the TA. I pay you to teach me. So you're going to have to find some time to meet me. If I got to meet you at the mall, if I got to meet you at your house, you are going to see me. Listen to me, all men are created equal. Some work hard in preseason. When I went to college, guys were way smarter than me. 4.0s, 3.0s, they went to the Ivy League high schools, came to Oakwood from these great high schools. Most of them are not doing what I'm doing. Why? Because it's not about where you come from. It's about heart. You come to a place where, you know, being smart ain't enough. You gotta have heart. That's number one. Watch number two. Number two, catch number two. I wrote it down. I wanted to make sure you got it. It says, to be, watch this, watch this. We're talking about sacrifice now. The important thing is this. You're right in why I'm saying it, because I only have about three more minutes. Listen to me. The most important thing is this, to be able at any moment to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. That's the number two thing. You got to catch that one. To be able to, listen to me, at any moment, some of you, you can make sacrifices when Monday Night Football is not on. You can make a sacrifice, but when the game come on, for some reason, you just attach to it. For some of you, when your favorite show come on, you, you, can be, you can make sacrifices on Sunday when there ain't nothing going on. But when your favorite show comes on Monday, bam, some of you, you focus until the phone ring, and then you're like, I gotta answer it. If I don't answer the phone, I'm gonna die. I'm saying to you today that there are some of you, if you give up your cell phone, you would be successful. But your cell phone is more important to you than your success. I'm gonna say it again, I'm gonna hurt somebody. I'm gonna hurt somebody. Some of you need to give up your cell phone because the time you spend on your cell phone could be used for your success. The time you could be using to be successful, you're using it on the cell. And the cell phone is not bringing you nothing but a bill. And somebody has told you, you couldn't live without it. I'm talking about going deep now, giving up stuff. Watch what it says. To be able at any moment to sacrifice what we are for what we could be. I don't do well in math. You're right. You ain't never studied. I'm not good in writing because you have never written before. But I dare you to fail in writing for a whole year to see if you can get to the end. I dare you to fail. I dare you to take that same class over and over again. I dare you to stop dropping classes like you soft. Always want to give up. I'm dropping. Why are you dropping? 
I'm so grateful that the slaves didn't drop and quit. Say, I'm just gonna stop. I'm a slave. I'm just gonna be a slave. I'm gonna quit. Listen to me, the slaves said, we will live because one day we will become. Listen to me very closely. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because the economy. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because of racism. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because it ain't the season. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because they don't love you. You keep saying you ain't on the next level because the opportunity ain't there. The truth of the matter is that you ain't there because you ain't there. Some of you, you know what you want. You know what you want, but you are not personally willing to do the work it takes to get it. What you're trying to do is do what you've done on this level and get the next level. You're trying to do exactly what you're doing on this level. You're like, I'm getting up every day. I'm putting in two and a half. I'm putting in three and I'm not getting the opportunity. The opportunity might require three and a half. I'm lifting weights. I'm eating right and I'm not getting the opportunity. It might require getting up and working out three and a half. It might require you saying no to your friends. It might require you changing your diet. It might require you moving to another city. Whatever it takes, you gotta be willing to do it and you keep saying you're not there because of something else because it's easier to blame somebody else. Because now you don't gotta do no work when you blame somebody else. Guess who gotta do the work? They gotta do the work. But guess who got the power? They got the power. So what I'm telling you to do, since you hate being told what to do, you're going to have to fix yourself since you don't like nobody else telling you what to do. If you could fix procrastination, what would your life be like? You, you understand what I'm saying? People like E.T., I want to do what you do. No, you don't. I'm my own boss. When I worked at Michigan State, I had to be to work at 9 o'clock. When I work for myself, I get up at 3. When I worked at Michigan State, I get to leave at 5. When you work for yourself, you don't have no time when you get off. You don't get off. You stop when the work is done. If you work for yourself, you'd be asleep all day. You'd be like, I work for myself. I'm good. I ain't even getting up today. You know what I'm saying? I'm just taking a day off. I'm just being real. There are those of you who work for yourself. You don't even have a plan. You don't even have like a, a vacation package for yourself. You just get to get off whenever you want to. What kind of job is that? You can just take off when you want to. That ain't no real job. You ain't got no insurance. You ain't paying yourself. You ain't, oh, but when you had a job, you could get there for them when they wanted you to get there. Oh, you had to tell them when you was gonna be sick, when you want, but for yourself, you ain't gotta do nothing. That's why you can't blow up. You ain't got enough discipline to discipline you.